And the 76ers decided to keep James Harden back in Philadelphia to get him in game shape faster. They claim, this is great, they say, well, we really want him to work with our developmental coaches and medical staff. And so he's been away for a few days. Now, that's the company line, which is fresh bullcrap. You can smell it right through my voice. You can smell the bullcrap. Uh, so, yeah, you know, that's the ticket. Now, let us discuss the question here. The question is, what is your position on the James Harden saga in Philadelphia, the latest developments? My views, Austin Powers, Barracuda, and Old Country Road. And we will connect all of these things together, and we are going to make waffles, just like Russell Wilson had when he Spoiled Sierra by renting out yeah, that Waffle baby. House. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Now, first of all, James Harden is following the analytics. This is all planned out. It's like watching a baseball game. It's all scripted reality. James Harden planned on causing chaos, and James Harden is causing chaos. The tallest blade of grass gets cut. Nobody in his generation of NBA players has been better at instigating a relocation situation than Harden. He is Machiavellian the way he goes about his business. And a better analogy would be when I see James Harden and the whole commentary, you know, going to China and just trashing Daryl Morey, right, because you want to sell more shoes in China, so you trash the guy that supported Hong Kong and that's, uh, I mean, we're obviously know what he's doing hard. He's a businessman. He's like, hey, I can trash this guy, and I can get the daily double. I'll get off the Sixers, and I'll go somewhere else, and then I'll sell a bunch of shoes in China, uh, and it'd be great. But he's Dr. Evil, James Harden from Austin Powers, and the best part of this plan is no one can stop me. No one. Uh, if it looks like a rat and it smells like a rat, it's a rat. And I know where the rat is in this story. A little birdie says that James Harden went to the airport. This is the story. He went to the airport to join the Sixers on the road and was denied entry onto the team plane by a meathead security guard for the team. If true, if true, this is another feather in the cap for James Harden. I'll tell you why. That means the Philadelphia 76ers are going to be fined and not James Harden. How sweet it is, right? Because if the rule states that the star player has to attend and perform in nationally televised games, and if James Harden, if it's true that James Harden attempted to fly with the team under the guise of playing for the Sixers, then that could only mean that the Sixers are the ones that blocked him. And I get why they did it, right? If you could keep cancer out of your body, you'd keep cancer out of your body. I get it. Uh, but man alive, what a what a tale. Now, second, headline stays in Milwaukee. The Dame train choo-choo, has left the station. Dame Lillard, 39 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists. And Milwaukee able to squeeze past Philadelphia. In the fourth quarter, you bet on the 76ers. You won the bet. But give me your first impressions. Give me your first impressions of Dame Lillard in a Bucks uniform. So I had this game on the small TV. I had the football on the big TV. So this was on the small TV. So I was mostly watching the football, but I did, in the commercials, there's a lot of dead time in football, so I flipped over to the basketball and you know, on, on, on the small TV. And when I was looking, I, I noticed – Boy, that's the same guy I remember from Portland. Dame Lillard is even more fearsome, like a barracuda in Wisconsin, and he is as lethal as a giant anaconda uh, with, with the Bucs. Uh, very impressive. Right? We talked about Victor Wembanyama with a dud, just kind of a blah beginning to his career in San Antonio, but everyone gives him a break because he's a kid. Well, Damian Lillard was perfect. He had no turnovers. He had 14 points in a close game in the fourth quarter. And he turned the game in, and this is not aesthetically pleasing per se, so I'm not saying this is a compliment, but it's very effective during the regular season. Dame Lillard became good James Harden. Remember when Harden was at his best with the Rockettes and he would get to the foul line 15 times a game? And Lillard turned this game into a papa shot from the charity strike that he kept getting to the, to the foul line 
whenever he wanted. 17 foul shot attempts, 17 for 17 on free throws. And he matched up with Giannis Adentacumbo and the comparison. Nobody else has this comparison. If you put Giannis Adentacumbo and Dame Lillard on a dish, that combo, spaghetti and meatballs. They're that good. Spaghetti and meatballs. And all things being equal, meaning that there's no obvious injury, I don't know how you beat that combination because in a playoff environment, now Giannis still misses a bunch of foul shots, but he's the number two, not the number one late in game. Like Giannis can be the first option for the first three quarters, but late and close, it's Damian Lillard. All right, final thought. In a blatant attempt to suck up to our listeners in Dallas and the greater Phoenix area. Headline from the Fall Classic in Arlington. The 2023 World Series begins tonight. It's on Fox. You better watch game one of the 2023 World Series. Now, while it is a bland matchup, it is in, it's a baked potato with no topping is what it is. That's bland. Are we going to watch? Sure. It's the freaking World Series. So it is also a workplace hazard, right? The, the Rangers and Diamondbacks, who you got winning? Toss-up question. Rangers or Diamondbacks, you can only pick one. Who you have winning the World Series? All right, now I'm going to go first. And I spent minutes handicapping the World Series. And I would like to attempt some cosplay. I'm putting on right now my chaps. I've got my lasso and my cowboy hat as a distant relative of Nostradamus and a friend of Nostradinus. He lives in Seattle. We are going with the Texas Rangers. The Rangers, your world champions, they will win in five games. The Rangers take down the Snakes. The Texas Rangers win their first championship. Congratulations to Corey Seager. And all the 23 baseball fans in Arlington, Texas, as the Rangers get it done. What if I told you that Major League Baseball as a business needs the Texas Rangers to win the World Series? Let me tell you why. Bruce Bochy. Bruce Bochy is the last of the Mohegans. Uh, he's from down the old country road. Have a hunch. Bet a bunch. This is not your typical standard robotic Dave Roberts or Aaron Boone who follows the three-ring binder and whatever King Nerd tells them to do because they're mindless. Bruce Bochy has machismo. Bruce Bochy's got the biggest marbles in baseball, and he doesn't go by what some idiot... And, and the, listen, the Rangers have an Ivy League guy as their GM. Every team has an Ivy League guy as their GM. But they allow Bochi to breathe, and I love it. Plus, the Rangers spent a crap ton load of money to put this team together. They sucked. Their roster blew. So they went out and signed Corey Seager away from the Dodgers. They signed Marcus Simeon in free agency. They went out and fixed the pitching staff. And some of the guys they picked up were total failures, like Jacob DeGrom, who's going to get a World Series ring if the Rangers win. It doesn't matter. I believe if you put that kind of commitment that you go for it, you should win. Arizona winning sends a bad message to everyone in baseball because they tanked, right, and they didn't spend any money, and they had a mediocre regular season. They were mediocre for six months, and all they've done is play okay for a month. That's it, right? Uh, on, if Arizona wins, then that furthers the notion that you don't have to have sexy big-name players and all that, that you can get a bunch of nobodies, a bunch of turd burgers, and put them out in the field. But here's what's going to happen. The clock is going to strike midnight in Phoenix, and Corbin Carroll and the Diamondbacks are going to go back to the shadows of whence they came, back in the gutter. And your Texas Rangers, what a great win for Bruce Bochy. Another World Series for his Hall of Fame resume. Seager gets a second World Series. In that ballpark, and uh, we'll, we'll see where the parade is. Now, my recommendation for the Rangers parade 
is to go right through Jerry's world, right? Just stick it to Jerry Jones, right? Just, you, know, I, I, you should have the rally at the star, right? Right there where Jerry Jones' office is. Just have your rally to show the incompetence of the Dallas Cowboys that the Texas Rangers can get to multiple World Series since the Cowboys last won a World Series or even made a World Series or a Super Bowl, rather, and, and just have a, a grand old hootenanny. Just have a great time.